Well, the Bills have a tall order in front of them this weekend as they try to get another winning streak going in Baltimore. They'll be facing the remnants of Hurricane Ian while going up against one of the league's most explosive offenses with an injury report that would take the rest of the show to read off, so I'm not going to. Now, all of this, of course, is coming off of last week's heartbreaker in Miami, and despite all of that, the odds makers have the Bills as three and a half point favorites in this one. Well, that's positive. So a good time to bring in two on your sides. Bills insider Vic Carucci, Senor Carucci, as I like to call him for our Friday chat as we look ahead to Baltimore. Hi, Vic. It's great to have you with us. Great to be with you, Mary Alice. Uh, Vic, we talked about the injuries. There are really too many to list at this point. What kind of factor are you seeing them having in this game? Yeah, it's 16 names overall, a couple more than they had going into the Miami game last week. Uh, the, the thing is, three guys are out. I think there were four out designated by Friday before uh, last Sunday's game. And then seven are questionable. So a lot of stuff up in the air. But Jordan Phillips, one of the big names on the out list uh, to look at. And, and Christian Benford, the young, uh, the rookie who played well at cornerback, uh, suffered a, a hand injury in that Miami game, so he's out. So uh, still some compromised stuff, especially on the defensive side. But, Mary Alice, the good news, they held up quite well with all those injuries last week. My expectation is that they can do it again this week. Yeah, Vic, our offense really was a juggernaut through the first two games um, before a lot of missed opportunities, obviously, in Miami. But how do you see things turning out uh, against the Ravens, how do we match up? Are we talking about uh, a tougher opponent here? I, I think they match up really well. Uh, the Ravens secondary is not good. <laughs> They've had a lot of problems. Some uh, of their problems are injury related as well, but they just haven't played well back there. I think Josh Allen can have another big day, but I think more of the big plays rather than those sort of dink and dunk plays that he had that accumulated a lot of yards, but not a lot of points against Miami. And we have to talk about what happened, Vic, in Cincinnati last night with Dolphins QB Tua Tungalovia uh, leaving on a stretcher with a concussion just days after everyone thought he had one against the Bills, only to have him cleared to return. So I guess the good news is that he was released from the hospital last night, but there are a lot of questions. First of all, accountability. Vic, there's supposed to be an extensive concussion protocol, but it doesn't seem like it was followed. Yeah, that's the big question after this one is how did he a get allowed back into last week's game in the second half after that scary looking situation wobbly uh, near the end of the first half and then last night where uh, he had of course you know got slammed to the ground again and it was horrifying to see the way his fingers were extended and all that everybody could think about was why is he playing this game and and where you assumed he was you know, as vulnerable as he was. Now, all the news seems to be positive about his recovery and all of that, but that's not the issue. The issue is why. And I think you got some layers to this, Mary Alice. Number one, the business, the economics of it all. Uh, NFL teams, you know, want to play those Thursday night games because they are very lucrative. A uh, big contract from Amazon. That forced the Dolphins to play a game four days after the oppressive heat and the 90 plays that their defense was on the field against the Bills and Tua going what he went through. And the investigation that we've heard about that the NFL union has been pushing, players union, pushing uh, to see what the heck went wrong, has been delayed by the fact that a game was coming up. It actually took second, you know, uh, second fiddle backseat to that. The other agenda is coaches have a lot of pressure. They want to keep their jobs and keep their jobs best when they have their best players helping them win. And then players, and this is the big problem, the most vulnerable, they want to play. They try to push their way back onto the field because it costs them money, perhaps right. their careers mm -hmm. if they don't. So that's, that's an issue. And I heard a disturbing thing today about the baseline players intentionally failing kind of the or keeping the baseline testing that's done for the protocols uh, to determine whether they can go back and play as low as possible so that it's a lower threshold when they're tested. That's right. scary stuff. Yeah, obviously a lot broke down in that protocol, and we're going to hear a lot more, I'm sure, in the coming days and weeks. Vic Carucci, our Bills insider, thanks so much for joining us tonight, and go Bills. My pleasure, Mary Alice.